Young men are experiencing mental illness at an absolutely unprecedented rate. Things like anxiety, depression, signs of low testosterone, not being able to get it up in the morning, not having a hard on for life. Totally unacceptable. In this video today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how I went from an incredibly low T boy who was literally talking to his grandfather one day who thought that he was talking to his granddaughter and didn't have the courage to even correct him to a very grounded, well-adjusted, if I do say so myself, adult male. So buckle up boys and let this one land. So I must have been 11, maybe 12 years old. And at the time I was holding what I deemed to be a fairly sophisticated device. It was a landline, albeit a cordless one. And I'm talking to my dad's dad, my grandfather. And as the conversation evolves, I get the sense that he thinks he's talking to his granddaughter, my sister, Amanda. And I was literally so shy, introverted, stifled inside my head that I didn't even dare to correct him. I just had a very low self-esteem and low self-opinion of myself, frankly, for the first 20 years of my life. And he literally was asking me about like dance recitals. My sister <laughs> did these, you know, various dance classes at nighttime. I was meanwhile an ice hockey player and I just kind of went along with the script, with the routine, just took the path of least resistance. And at the end of the day, guys, I was just a people pleaser. I didn't want to create any ripples, any waves in the water that I was simply treading and trying to stay afloat. And I don't want that for you guys. I want to teach you how I went from this boy psychology as an 11 or 12 year old to now being in my late 20s and having the confidence that allows me to navigate this life in a really nice fashion. I'm really grateful for the person that I'm able to be and show up for in this life. And I want you all to benefit from that same psychology, that inner knowing that you are the man. You don't have to put on an act. You just know that you're the man. You have this inner knowing and you operate with alpha energy. And what I mean by alpha, because this so often gets conflated in particular with the toxic masculinity movement, what I mean by alpha is that you are at ease with yourself. You are fundamentally grounded. And it's not that you are impervious to the opinions of others. You value feedback, but you take everything with a grain of salt and you operate from your own core essence. And you are always at the end of the day, El Capitan. You're always the ultimate arbiter who has the final vote. And other people's opinions matter and you factor that in. But at the end of the day, you are the one who is executing your own decisions. You are the final judge as it were. And so let's talk a little bit about that and why it would behoove you to morph from the aforementioned boy psychology to that of a grounded alpha male. The greatest benefit of embodying your masculine energy is going to be the state of mind that it solidifies for you. Imagine being a citizen of this world, or in other words, feeling at home no matter where you go. Not just having situational confidence. Maybe you've been in the gym pumping iron for four, maybe five years, and you're doing some preacher curls, or you're under the barbell doing some squats, and you feel really confident in that moment. You have situational confidence. But for me, on this journey of self-actualization, I wanted a really deeply rooted identity level change. I didn't want to just have nice things or do better things. I wanted to be a better person, a better man. I just wanted to wake up every day with a heart on for life, just knowing that I was the man, knowing that I was the person that I was sent here to be, being at ease with myself and really comfortable in my own skin. And what you're gonna notice is that it's that state of mind that you solidify, that is the true prize 
of this process. It's really infectious, man. I can tell you as someone who spent the first 20 years of my life incredibly inflamed, uptight, and anxious, that it's truly a breath of fresh air when you come across someone ah, who's just really fundamentally at ease with themselves and really grounded. You feel at home like El Capitan, man. You feel like the captain, you feel like the man, and you lead in good faith. You invite other people to join you on your journey. A wise man once said that you are not what you think you are, and you're not even what other people think you are. You are what you think other people think you are. And what this epitomizes is the laborious, unnecessary mental jujitsu that we are playing in our minds, trying to navigate, sidestep, and jump through the proverbial hoops that we feel society has set before us. You know, instead of being like a boom, a bullet train with a set destination and inviting other passengers to join us on that voyage, we have these hoops that we feel we have to be a dancing monkey to jump through, to garner other people's approval. And look, I never wanted to create any waves, any ripples with the aforementioned story of my paternal grandfather and talking to him on the phone. He literally thinks I'm a girl because my voice is so soft and high pitched that I didn't want to actually interrupt that narrative. I was the passenger and I was just going along with the script that he was running. But as you transition from a boy to a man psychology, you're gonna to have to become more grounded and confident in your own pathway forward. And you're gonna to have to realize that that is the right path. I mean, for better or worse, it's better to take a step in the wrong direction than not at all. Because when you do that, it gives you a different perspective. So whatever step you're taking, you just wanna to commit to it. You don't wanna take a half-assed step forward. Something that I've really struggled with in my past as a direct support professional, just the job that I happened to be doing at the time, I was working with brain traumatized folks, these residents of this rehabilitation home. And one of my coworkers was really sensitive to the smell of fish. God, I could swear she had the nose of a greyhound. I would be at the other side of the cottage that I was working at. I would be in one of the residents room, Michael, at the, the end of the hallway and I would crack open my pre-packed lunch and trying to get some protein in and make some gains, man. And I was eating salmon and I can just remember how repulsed she was by that and how much that affected me psychologically. From that day forward, I was just like, uh-oh, can't like, do the thing. I can't disappoint or bring chaos to Nicole's life. So like she got in my head and I was just always worried about displeasing her or doing something like eating salmon that was going to disrupt her experience of life, man. And that's important to note is that you do need to be empathetic and understanding of the big picture, right? So maybe take your salmon outside or maybe switch things around, have salmon for dinner. Like it's not that you're just this bullet train that is not sentient, is not cognizant of the needs and the feelings of others. You do wanna be sensitive to that and you want to factor that in. But at the end of the day, other people's feedback is just that, it's feedback. You have to then make the decision and I do recommend actually embracing that feedback and not intentionally going out of your way to displease your coworker, Nicole, but also realize that you don't want to be living on the momentum. This is so important. You do not want to be living on the momentum of other people's expectations. You know, so Nicole doesn't expect you to pack your own lunch of protein filled fish anymore. You don't have to just succumb to that. You don't have to be checkmated by that. You can work around that and better yet, have a conversation with Nicole. Be honest, I never actually did this. I didn't have the confidence to, but maybe just set her aside and talk about the importance of that salmon, how you are an avid weightlifter and you're trying to improve your health, improve your physique, 
and how important that is to you. But you definitely don't want to be at odds with her experience of that and just have a down to earth conversation. And what you'll notice is that by just being authentic and expressing your concerns, you can actually have a win-win. You can be on the same team. And if you approach life like that, you're gonna be a benevolent king. You're gonna be someone who, yeah, at the end of the day, you know what, I could pack that salmon every single day and it wouldn't phase me. I wouldn't be bothered by her opinion. But I wanna embody that benevolence so that everybody is winning. So I just wanna give a couple examples now of things that I do now being in my late 20s that perhaps are not normal and allow me to flex that muscle of saying no, of being that bullet train that is going where it's going. So for example, last month I was out at Longhorns with a couple of my friends and because I don't eat out that regularly, when I do, I always ask the waiter if there are seed oils that they cook the meat in. You know, I'm at a steakhouse, I'm gonna get some steak and potatoes and that's exactly what I did, is I had a dialogue with the waiter. Yeah, and one quick thing I gotta ask about like the steak, I've got like an allergy to, depending on the type of oil they use, like mm -hmm. canola, vegetables, so can you guys use either butter or coconut oil? Those are the two safe ones for me. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Because it's very important to me that I don't expose my body to seed oils, to vegetable oils, corn, canola, cotton seed, soybean. These oils are incredibly toxic. They're going to tank your testosterone and they have no place in the human body. And so I went out of my way to voice my concern for these oils, saying that I am allergic to them, which is not even an exaggeration because they are incredibly inflammatory, omega-6 fats. I can remember the manager of the store actually came out and disclosed the fact that the entire restaurant drenches their cookware in canola oil. And at the end of the day, we were able to work out an agreement and an arrangement to get my meat prepared in a separate place so that it wasn't going to be exposed to those toxic oils. But the point is, is that he told me that I was the first person to ever voice the fact that they have an allergy. But guys, that is the standard that I set for myself. That's the bullet train with an A to B destination. I know where I'm going and I'm gonna get there. Another example of something that I do that is not necessarily societally acceptable or normal is that when I wake up in the morning, after I go to the bathroom and I've got some cold water that I like to rehydrate with first thing in the morning, I will go outside, maybe my boxers or usually a pair of shorts, shirtless, and I walk across the road and I get grounded firstly, I get exposure to the first light of the day and I sit down and I do holotropic breath work. And I live on a fairly silent street, but during this breath work and this meditation practice of mine, I do perceive cars driving by. And it's not every day that you see some lad shirtless on the side of the road meditating. That's not exactly a common practice. But the point is, is that I'm going to do that regardless of the external environment. I'm going to do that because it is a massive win for me, sinking my circadian rhythm, improving my breath work, my lung capacity, my ability to get present to the moment. And it's going to set the tempo for the day to come. And it's going to allow me to emanate the greatest energy possible. So everybody wins. And I know that. God, I'm so excited for what the future has in store for you. I don't even think you can imagine right now how the world is going to become your oyster. So happy to be a part of your journey. And what I have to bold italicize and underscore is the fact that this isn't a spectator sport and that necessarily you are going to have to have skin in the game. At any point in time, my friend, you have to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. So it's not just enough to watch this video and to intellectualize about it. You have to actually take action. And here are a couple things that you can do starting today.
that are really going to move the needle for you. I'm gonna give you guys the two primary tactics that I use personally in my early 20s to transition from boy to man psychology. The first one is cold approach. This isn't something that a lot of people do. It's kind of out of the ordinary, right? It's not expected that part of your walking day, you're just walking around, you're at the laundromat and you just spark up a conversation with someone that is unbeknownst to you. That's not expected. So you're breaking the societal norm. It's a pattern interrupt. And that's exactly what you need to test yourself, to get outside of your comfort zone, to do something that is not expected and then to hold frame in spite of that. And what you're going to notice is that as you get better at this, as you get more reps in, you're going to be so confident that even though, yes, societally, it is kind of a typical, it doesn't matter because people are just going to feel so comfortable with you as if they've known you for years because you will act so nonchalant and so casual because you've literally done it so many times that you could do it in your sleep. And imagine the seemingly superpower that that is going to confer you with being able to literally talk to anyone. Just imagine when you are in a foreign land, maybe you're traveling and taking a trip, being able to even just ask for directions, but to do so in a really socially calibrated way where they're giving good vibes back to you because you're emanating good, authentic vibes. Really powerful, guys. Cold approach pickup. And then number two is transcending your ego. And there's a number of different tactics that you could conceivably employ for this. Let's stick to the vanilla one today. And in future videos, we can expound upon tactics that are less accessible, but more effective. Guys, start with meditation, just a mindfulness practice. As aforementioned, this is something I do every single morning. I go outside, get grounded, do breath work, and I get present to the moment. Because when you are not identified with the ego, all of a sudden you become more grounded because you expand your circle of concern and you're no longer concerned about the petty little ego that is you. I hope you guys enjoy this one today. This has been life changing for me to have this grounded alpha at ease energy. It's something that I carry with me throughout my entire life, it allows me to feel at home no matter what door I open up and walk through and what room I reside in. And I wish the same for all of you guys. One of the overarching themes of my life has been building a better body, fixing physiology. So in addition to the afford to mention tactics, meditation, or any ego transcending activities, and then also breaking societal conventions and norms, such as cold approaching strangers and just striking up conversations. I also did wanted to mention bio optimization. And if you guys are interested in that, I definitely recommend subscribing to this channel. I'm going to be releasing a lot of content about how I actually did that and how you can too, how to optimize your testosterone levels. So literally at the endogenous internal level, you are peaked to your potential. I'm going to help you guys prime your potential and I'm super excited for you to join me on this journey. So drop a comment down below, my friend, like, and subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, my friend, find your freedom. Peace.